How Chernobyl disaster occur and what was the impact? On April 26, 1986, a sudden surge of power during a reactor systems test destroyed Unit 4 of the nuclear power station at Chernobyl, Ukraine, in the former Soviet Union. The accident and the fire that followed released massive amounts of radioactive material into the environment. Emergency crews responding to the accident used helicopters to pour sand and boron on the reactor debris. The sand was to stop the fire and additional releases of radioactive material. The boron was to prevent additional nuclear reactions. A few weeks after the accident, the crews completely covered the damaged unit in a temporary concrete structure called the sarcophagus to limit further release of radioactive material. The Soviet government also cut down and buried about a square mile of pine forest near the plant to reduce radioactive contamination at and near the site. Chernobyl's three other reactors were subsequently restarted but all eventually shut down for good with the last reactor closing in December 2000. The Soviet nuclear power authorities presented their initial accident report to an International Atomic Energy Agency meeting in Vienna, Austria, in August 1986. After the accident, officials closed off the area within 30 kilometers, 18 miles, of the plant, except for persons with official business at the plant and those people evaluating and dealing with the consequences of the accident and operating the undamaged reactors. The Soviet, and later on, Russian, government evacuated about 115,000 people from the most heavily contaminated areas in 1986 and another 220,000 people in subsequent years. Meanwhile, the thousands of inhabitants of the nearby town of Pripyat and the Soviet Union were unaware that anything had occurred. So the reactor kept burning, spewing radioactive chemicals into the air while the citizens of Kyiv, a city of millions of people, paraded to celebrate the Soviet holiday of May 1st. Eventually, Mikhail Gorbachev and the Soviet Union, under immense international pressure, were forced to admit that a nuclear accident had occurred. As a result, the people of the Soviet Union were called up to help clean up the radioactive debris, put out the fire, and seal off the reactor. In total, some 800,000 Soviet reservists were called up for the cleanup process, which cost an estimated $235 billion. Thousands were evacuated from a 30 kilometers exclusion zone around the reactor, never returning to their homes again. Dogs and cats were left to scavenge for food, and family photos were still left hanging on the walls. And, under Gorbachev's policy of glasnost, or openness, the truth started to come out. The truth was that the design of the Chernobyl reactor, the same as dozens in operation across the Soviet Union, was known to be flawed and had, in fact, been the cause of small-scale incidents across the USSR and even at reactor number 4 itself before 1986. Release of Radionuclides The radionuclides released from the reactor that caused exposure of individuals were mainly iodine-131, cesium-134 and cesium-137. Iodine-131 has a short radioactive half-life, 8 days, but it can be transferred to humans relatively rapidly from the air and through consumption of contaminated milk and leafy vegetables. Iodine becomes localized in the thyroid gland. For reasons related to the intake of milk and dairy products by infants and children, as well as the size of their thyroid glands and their metabolism, the radiation doses are usually higher for them than for adults. Average effective doses to those persons most affected by the accident were assessed to be about 120 MSV. For 530,000 recovery operation workers, 30 MSV for 115,000 evacuated persons and 9 MSV during the first two decades after the accident to those who continued to reside in contaminated areas. The exposures were much higher for those involved in mitigating the effects of the accident and those who resided nearby. Those exposures are reviewed in great detail in the UNSCEAR assessments. 
health effects of Chernobyl disaster. The Chernobyl accident caused many severe radiation effects almost immediately. Of 600 workers present on the site during the early morning of April 26, 1986, 134 received high doses, 0.8 to 16 grays, and suffered from radiation sickness. Of these, 28 died in the first three months and another 19 died in 1987 to 2004 of various causes, not necessarily associated with radiation exposure. In addition, according to the UNSCEAR 2008 report, the majority of the 530,000 registered recovery operation workers received doses of between 0.02 grays and 0.5 grays between 1986 and 1990. That cohort is still at potential risk of late consequences such as cancer and other diseases and their health will be followed closely. The Chernobyl accident also resulted in widespread radioactive contamination in areas of Belarus, the Russian Federation and Ukraine inhabited by several million people. In addition to causing radiation exposure, the accident caused long-term changes in the lives of the people living in the contaminated districts, since the measures intended to limit radiation doses included resettlement, changes in food supplies and restrictions on the activities of individuals and families. Later on, those changes were accompanied by the major economic, social, and political changes that took place when the former Soviet Union broke up. For the last two decades, attention has been focused on investigating the association between exposure caused by radionuclides released in the Chernobyl accident and late effects, in particular thyroid cancer in children. Among Russian recovery operation workers with higher doses, there is emerging evidence of some increase in the incidence of leukemia. Among the 106 patients surviving radiation sickness, complete normalization of health took several years. Many of those patients developed clinically significant radiation-induced cataracts in the first few years after the accident. There is a tendency to attribute increases in the rates of all cancers over time to the Chernobyl accident. The real-life suicide squad who saved Europe 30 years ago after 10 days from the main explosion taking place, the engineers that were on site learned of a new threat that was potentially much larger. The first explosion damaged the plant's water cooling system, which caused a large pool to form under the melting nuclear core. If the nuclear core were to reach this water, it would have caused what experts call a steam explosion. The experts who analyzed this matter said that the explosion could have had a force of five megatons. That would have not been such a big issue, however. All the steam released would infect the sky full of radiation which would end up spreading across the whole of Europe and Russia. Soviet physicist Vasily Nesterenko mentioned that this explosion would have made Europe uninhabitable. In order to stop this from happening, the water supply from the calling system had to be manually closed by turning a valve located in a chamber below the core. The problem was that this chamber was filled with extremely radioactive water. The first squadron of firefighters that have arrived on the scene on the 25th of April, when the explosion occurred had all died by the 10th day, and that was from just being close to parts of the exploded core. Three of the workers from the power plant volunteered to a mission that was simply put suicidal. They knew that someone had to do it and that it was their duty as workers from the plant. They were told that they would end up most likely to die down there due to the high levels of radiation. These three brave souls were Alexei Anonenko, Valery Bezpolov and Boris Baranov. They all volunteered to go on this suicide mission and were asked before going in if they want to back out. Anonenko was the most valuable person out of them all, who felt a bit forced by his position to volunteer, and this is because he was the only one on shift that knew exactly where the valve was located. Despite having the best possible anti-radiation gear, it was not looking promising for these three heroes. All equipped with flashlights went in and got promised that in case they were to die, the government would look after their families for being heroes. 
The water was only at knee height as firefighters managed to pump some of it out before the heroes entered. However, finding that valve in a corridor full of pipes and other valves was like finding a needle in the haystack. They were pressured by time, as the longer they spent down there, the shorter their lifespans were becoming or their chances of survival. Anonenko mentioned in an interview that it was a miracle they managed to find the valve in time, as many of the pipes have been scattered due to the explosion. Once they managed to close the valve that was releasing water, they made their way out and were happy to see the sun. The heroes were rushed to a decontamination room. These people became heroes as they not only saved Chernobyl from a much worse faith, but the whole of Europe. If the steam explosion was to happen, it would have released at least 400 times more radiation than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima during World War II. What happened to the heroes? Whilst researching about these three heroes, I was surprised to see how many lies have been written about their fate. Most journals and articles mention that they died a few hours after the mission. Some say that they managed to turn the valve, but no one survived and they all died inside the chamber. The truth can be found in Andrew Leatherbarrow's book, Chernobyl 1 hour 23 minutes and 40 seconds, published in 2016. Whilst writing this book, the author did a lot of research and even looked for these three heroes. To his surprise, they have lived many years after their suicidal mission. Boris Baranov was the first out of the three to die in 2005 from a heart attack. It was unclear if the radiation suffered on the mission had anything to do with the heart attack, but I don't think so based on how many years have passed. In 2015 Leatherbarrow found Valery Bezpilov well and healthy whilst still working within the nuclear industry. Alexei Anonenko Anonenko continued to work at the power plant for a further three years until 1989. He was present in person at the ceremony last year to receive his award the Order for Courage, third degree. Anonenko previously told Soviet media, everyone at the Chernobyl NPS, nuclear power station, was watching this operation. When the searchlight beam fell on a pipe, we were joyous, the pipe led to the valves. We heard the rush of water out of the tank. And in a few more minutes we were being embraced by the guys. Valery Bezpilov According to author Andrew Leatherbarrow, who has written the book 1 hour 23 minutes and 40 seconds, the incredible true story of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, one of the men is still working within the nuclear industry but would not reveal which one. Leatherbarrow lost track of one of the men in 2018, which is most likely to be Bezpilov, but this has not been verified. Boris Baranov Baranov died in 2005 after suffering a heart attack and was posthumously awarded the honor. Chernobyl continued to function as a nuclear power plant with the other three reactors still functioning. Reactor 2 was only shut down in 1991 following a fire and political pressure led Reactor 1 to be closed in 1996.